So I would like to welcome you to the event organized by the Center for Fundamental Rights called The Right Path, Spain, Hungary and Europe's Future. First of all, I would like to ask Miklos Santo, Director General of the Center for Fundamental Rights, to deliver his opening speech. Thank you very much, Andre. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Vice President, and um, everybody in attendance. Once again, a special welcome to our uh, um, Spanish friend, Juan Garcia Gallardo, who, despite his very young age, is the Vice President of one of the most significant uh, provinces of Spain, Castilla and León, representing the party Vox. Castilla and León previously was known for its uh, absolutely breathtaking cultural heritage, but from 2022 onwards we know that, the, um, that this area is actually the um, textbook example of European cultural reconquista. Um, at the 2019 provincial elections, Vox had only one men mandate at the local government, local parliament, but in 2022 uh, they managed to gather 13 mandates and this is the rate of increase that we'd like to see all across Europe in terms of uh, right-wing mandates. And through the example of Castille, the right wing can learn that if we band together, we may be unstoppable. And the People's Parties and the Vox's coordination uh, brought about a strengthening of the right and actually uh, toppled the left wing leader there. Here in Hungary, we say that together we represent great strength. Obviously, the Spanish and Hungarian right-wing politicians should work together, and the Center for Fundamental Rights, together with MCC, we are working towards that goal, and this is why we are very happy to have the Spanish delegation here. And obviously, both the Spanish and the Hungarian right-wing is aware of the fact that uh, the reconquest is not just about the extremist liberal globalists um, and obviously they would like to destroy everything that is dear to us, God, homeland, family. And obviously we are not only in need of a right wing um, of a right wing turn of events, but also we need uh, common sense and obviously the reconquest is of high significance when we are protecting our sovereign states against migration as well as our cultural identity and um, uh, everything else obviously our spanish counterparts do have experience in terms of that already during the ninth century they put a stop to the advance of uh, um, various other sources but uh, other forces, obviously. Um, so I, there's a world-renowned painting in the Museum of Fine Arts uh, that can be found in Budapest. It was painted by Gian Battista Gian Battista Tiepolo um, about Saint Jacob, and this is the painting which ac actually illustrates. Um, the strength of Christian faith in action on a battleground and obviously that uh, for the protection of Christianity um, the, the protection of Christianity and this the battle against migration is one issue because without faith there's no self-protection in Europe and without faith Europe which is uh, which has been fooled by the gender craze is going to govern itself to the brink of cultural and economic suicide. And obviously, a European-wide reconquest is going to come to one of its milestones in June during the European Parliament elections, because obviously we do not want to leave Brussels, but we want to reconquer it. And about, um, in light of what has been mentioned, we know that the stakes during this particular election is higher than ever and it's got a civilizational significance. The, e a the MEPs of the Spanish right take a stand 
for righteousness and justice in Brussels, which is very uh, important. But the fact that some Spanish MEPs actually back Hungary in some issues is indeed unprecedented and working against taboos. We have to band together for the elections in June uh, because united we stand and united we are strong. And this is the motto of CPEC Hungary, which we organized the second time for the second time in 2023. We managed to gather the conservative forces from across the globe together with Vox representatives and um, with the CPAC, we managed to realize an international cooperation of international right-wing forces. We are, the, we are at the front lines of a global culture war, and we love being there. So this year, 25th to 26th of April, we are going to organize CPAC for the third time. We are going to free everybody of woke. And together with our Spanish friends, we are going to drain the swamp in Brussels, the political swamp in Brussels, obviously, next to these um, short-term objectives. The Spanish and the Hungarian right wing is connected by long-term goals as well, which is about um, sovereignty and the protection of democracy. Unfortunately, what we are seeing in many European countries and maybe across the entire Western civilization is that the left is um, getting allied with extremist forces so that it may undermine sovereignty and the strength of the central government going against the will of the voters and going against democracy. Unfortunately, this is what is happening in Spain where the left conspired with terrorist forces and this is what we are actually seeing in Hungary too where the left um, is working together with the representative George Soros and his open society or signs with globalist forces to topple democratically elected Hungarian government. So, if those who are protecting sovereignty, so the sovereignty of a country, are not only waging an ideological war, but are also protecting democracy. And in this very new 21st century reconqu reconquest, obviously we are counting on our Spanish allies, Mr. Gallardo, our friend Santiago Abasca, and at the latest we are going to uh, meet once again in April at the CPAC. So once again, um, united we stand and united we are strong. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Director General. And now I would like to ask Juan Garcia Gallardo, Vice President of the Province of Castilla and León, to deliver his speech. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation. It's for me a real pleasure and an honor to be here back in Hungary again. I came uh, last November to an activity of the Committee of the Regions because I participate there in, rep in representation of my region, Castilla y León, with the ECR party. And there we had the opportunity to, keep, to, to have a, a first touch with you. And for me, it's an honor to be today here to, to share experiences. I came more to listen than to talk, but let me talk just for five minutes and we'll share uh, after a, a little debate. As I've heard uh, to Victor Orban in the in our big international congress, uh, Viva 22, uh, we can't uh, let millions of illegal migrants invade uh, the countries of the European Union. We must defend our sovereignty and traditions against the bureaucrats from Brussels. We must take care of our culture and our way of life. We have to protect our families and children against globalist ideology. In this new world, Brussels wants to impose us how to educate our kids. They try to convince us that children belong to them, but not. Children belong to their families, which have their uh, responsibility to educate them, help them grow and to develop their own personality. Our future doesn't belong to Brussels or to migration. It belongs to the European people. It belongs to us and it's part of our civilization. 
small, a small group of bureaucrats in Brussels believe that they are the ones that are building Europe. They are wrong. Sovereign nations uh, are building Europe. We can build a better future again. But first, we must protect our own identity, our Christian civilization, our cultural heritage. We, we can do it together. To do so, we must achieve the following, to give more power to the real and true creators of the best Europe, the sovereign nations. The political landscape that has appeared up uh, in the last uh, decade has changed a lot. The social democratic consensus is breaking. Now, conservative parties are demanding uh, everything they have been losing over the last decades. Political sovereignty, food sovereignty, energy sovereignty, and border control. However, there is a first lesson to be learned. There are no single solutions for different problems. Nations have similar problems only in appearance. And respect for the plurality of answers to, a, to the specific problems of each nation is a basic principle of coexistence for us conservatives. What we must do is to watch around, to talk with political movements around uh, the world, to see how they face common challenges, and then uh, we take uh, each one our own decisions from our national pers uh, perspectives. These kind of meetings are the ones that strengthen our relations uh, that maybe 30 years uh, ago would be uh, unthinkable. Among this party, there, are, there is a broad uh, consensus about uh, around the main enemy. We want to put common sense at the center. We want uh, to fight against gender ideology. We want to protect our borders I will, and we want to protect our children. That's uh, what we Spanish people can learn from Hungary, uh, an approach and a realistic approach to problems and a pragmatism in politics. And I want to say you something from the Spanish perspective. It looks very difficult, but I think that finally uh, we will win. As you know, in Spain, our enemies are kicking hard and are not going to make things easy to us. The left and the globalists know that Vox puts in common millions of Spaniards around strong convictions. We must stay firm. The survival of our nation is under threat. In front of us, we have a national government, government allied with the radical left, communists, separatists, and even the terrorists from the Basque country. In front of us, we have a 2030 agenda that wants to impose us an economic and social model destructive for our way of life of the middle, of the middle classes and the most vulnerable people from our society. In front of us, we have a wild globalism that brings us a, a war between men and women and which attacks our roots, what we are, our identity. In front of us, we have a multiculturalism that promotes the entrance of thousands and thousands of illegal migrants breaking the peace in our neighborhoods. I just uh, want to say this as an introduction. I've came here to uh, have uh, meetings with you to learn from your experience of government. Uh, I think we have a uh, common threats that we can solve uh, together. And hopefully after these talks, we can face better the European elections in June. And uh, hopefully also we can double our representation in the European Parliament so uh, to, to make possible that the future uh, will be for the patriots. Thank you very much and let's debate now. Now we are going to continue with the podium discussion. I would like to ask Garcia, Mr. Garcia Gallardo to take his seat and I would like to ask the same from Jose Gonzalez Garza, a senior fellow at our center take their seats and begin the discussion. Thank you.
Okay. Um, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, my first uh, words will be uh, thanking everyone who is uh, taking the time out to come along to this event, and obviously His Excellency the Ambassador. Thank you for gracing, with, uh, gracing us with your presence. Uh, I think we're incredibly lucky uh, as, a, as the Center for Fundamental Rights to be uh, sitting down and talking to Juan Garcia Gallardo, um, who is a significant figure in Spanish public life in so many respects. And, uh, and I think in, in, um, in several ways, I think you're, you're being very generous by showing up and coming to Hungary in this occasion. You've been uh, so busy just the last few days. On Saturday morning, you were in Madrid celebrating the re-election of uh, Vox leader Santiago Bascal. Um, the day after, you were campaigning in, in Galicia, uh, in the northwest of Spain, which is heading into regional elections in mid-February, which will be a tough race, uh, where you're hoping to break into the regional parliament. Um, and then right after this visit on Wednesday, you're headed to Brussels for a plenary session of the, of the Committee of the Regions of the European Union. Um, and you've, um, and you've been, you'll be in Brussels, by the way, speaking up for the interests of farmers, which is an issue that you care uh, very deeply about. And you've been uh, very gracious squeezing this visit in between um, these, these activities, so we're, we're very grateful. Um, and my second, uh, my second uh, observation will be, will be, uh, will be um, uh, congratulations are in order, I think, in, in two separate, on two separate counts. Um, we should congratulate you on joining the National Executive Committee of Vox as one of its new uh, members, uh, a role that was officialized on, on Saturday at the General Assembly. Uh, you'll be playing a key role in shaping and leading the party's strategy and its agenda, heading into what promises to be a very a momentous year with plenty of elections, not just in Galicia, but also in, in the Basque Country and, and Catalonia the, the year after, obviously the European elections in June. Um, uh, but even more importantly, not just politically, but personally too, we learned in your Saturday speech, we, kn we knew that you had gotten married about a year ago and we knew in your, uh, from your Saturday speech that you're now expecting a child and you, you will soon be um, a proud father. So, so thank you. Uh, I, I wanna begin I want to begin uh, by, by noting, as you said, that this is not your first time in Hungary. The last time was on November 10th. You gave a, uh, an admirable speech, I think, in, our, uh, in, in this country's parliament, uh, where you drew attention and, ra and raised the alarm about the coup d'etat being waged in Spain at the moment. Um, but you also invoked Hungary's patron saints, Saint Stephen, uh, Count Sechini. And I want to I want to begin by asking you, what, what does Hungary mean to you, Juan? Um, and the reason I'm asking is because you know, you seem to be taking a lot of risks in the Spanish media discourse by coming to Hungary and standing up for Hungary. Um, I, there is a, a, a journalist in Spain who will be uh, um, unfamiliar to most of the people gathered here, but who are familiar to us, who is familiar to us, who in one um, key interview she said, you know, Juan, the left in Spain admires Venezuela, and then Juan Garcia Gallardo admires Hungary. What does Hungary mean to you? Is it on? Okay. Uh, let me begin, first of all, uh, saying thank you, of course, to the Spanish ambassador to, to be here uh, with us uh, this day. And also, I want to thank, again, uh, the Center for Fundamental Rights for the invitation to the next uh, CPAC in April. I hope I can come here with our President Santiago Abascal. It would be a, a real honor. And thank you, of course, uh, Jorge, for your generous words. Uh, uh, I don't, I'm not generous for coming here. You're very generous for inviting me again and for offering me the, the opportunity to talk about Castilla León, what we are doing here, and the, the reasons why we take uh, Hungary an example. I think the Spanish and the Hungarian people, we are very similar. We have uh, common challenges. Uh, we have similar uh, situations in, in many ways. And what I, what I admire most from, from Hungary and, and its people is its um, resistance against the pressure, not only from the international media, but also from other national governments that are trying to demonize what the uh, Hungarian government is doing to preserve the freedom of the families, for example, mm -hmm. uh, to give their children their uh, education and their their Christian values, uh, but also to resist against the blackmail of the European Commission uh, blocking the European Union uh, funds 
for ideological uh, issues. I think uh, that says a lot about the strength of the Hungarian people and, and the Hungarian moment, uh, uh, government. And for us, um, Hungary is, uh, is one model for, for, many, for many reasons. Maybe if, ha if I have to um, underline one, it may be the, the family policies of Hungary. Uh, Hungary has seen, as all the Western uh, civilization, that uh, Hungary has a problem of, of the birth rate and the, of a demographic winter. So the Hungarian government uh, has uh, pushed with a strong uh, bet for family policies. Uh, we have seen the experience of the Hungarian government uh, giving tax incentives to the families, saying to the people that if you find a person that you love, it's a good idea to create a family and to raise children, and that if you have a, an economic, a bad economic uh, situation, the, the Hungarian government is, uh, is going to, to back you and, and to give you support. That's a good example for us because we have the same problem. Uh, the, the people from Castilla y Leon uh, don't have many children. Our population is very old, and for us it's also a priority to, to have a, a demographic policies to try to revert uh, the situation. So uh, we are following also this path. We are the regional government in Spain with the most ambitious uh, family policies. There's a lot to do because we don't have uh, so much power as a national government as the Hungarian one, but we want uh, to, to increase our support uh, to the families. I think that's our number one priority in Castilla y León, and uh, we hope we can also start to revert um, this trend that the families uh, have less and less children, and hopefully we can have, again, a region with strong families as the one that we want. Yeah, uh, and I want to ask you a follow-up about um, you know, family policy and, 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 and natalism or, 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 or pro uh, pro family or, or pro um, pro fertility for pro natality um, you you are also in a very special position I think in again in Spanish public life as a leader as a, as a the leader of a party that cares deeply about demographics in a region where demographics is a particularly acute problem um, you know, you're in a, in a lot of the lot, lot of your public commentary and speeches. You you really you're you're battling against what you call the demographic winter. I think you're one of the uh, you're you should be credited uh, among a few people for having introduced that term into the Spanish discourse. Um, you, the, I think you're you're also people find that very compelling because you're you're obviously um, uh, a relatively young politician and and. But, but I think you're also someone who, who, um, who comes to Hungary and who doesn't necessarily see the case of Hungary as one necessarily just having to do with incentives and economics. You're someone who thinks deeply about culture. This is not just a matter of tax incentives and, you know, and, 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 and reducing tax rates and tax exemptions when, you, when your third child is born or whatever. I think what you've seen, and we had a conversation about this earlier today, right? You said, actually, the culture is different. It's, it's not just the, the tax the, the, the filing your taxes, it's the fact that the Hungarian culture encourages um, having a family, growing a family. Um, uh, you said, you know, um, we shouldn't think of having children as a burden. We shouldn't think of a father who pushes a baby boogie as a loser. We should think of him as a winner, as someone who is making an investment in, into the community. And um, are you hopeful that we can reverse the demographic winter in Castilla Leon just through tax incentives. How long do you think it's going to take for, country, for regions like Castilla Leon and for Spain at large to really begin to reverse this by having a different kind of discourse from the media, from the state, from the universities? From I think for us uh, politicians uh, to be optimistic is, is a duty. <laughs> uh, if we only see the present situation, we probably would be pessimistic, but we, we must be optimistic and we must take action to, to make the people be optimistic also. Um, I think that's a, a good thing that you introduced uh, this topic about not only like the public aid or the tax incentives that we can approve in our own administrations, but also the, the culture is important. 
Mm. Uh, when I arrived today to the Budapest uh, airport, I saw what everybody sees. That mm -hmm. is a, a place where they say Hungary, a pro-family country or a family-friendly country, something like that. And I also saw something that as a, a, a future, a next future father was, was good for me, that I saw that there was a room uh, specific for changing the clothes for the babies. So uh, there is a country that cares about families, that makes life easy to young parents, and that is very important. And also like the general message that um, for the Hungarian government, families are crucial, are important. So there's not only like the individual specific measures that uh, the Hungarian government is adopting, but also like the um, social um, opinion, the general opinion that there's a support for families. I think uh, we take uh, this an example. There's a lot of things to do and, and we are going to try to, to do them. And they, of course, the, the economic aids are uh, fundamental. Um, I think uh, that um, two young parents uh, from middle class or working class uh, must know that uh, having two or three children are not leaving them in a financial situation worse than they would be in a normal without a children mm -hmm. uh, situation. I think uh, governments, they have their also a duty and a responsibility to help uh, these young families uh, to raise their children. Buying, helping uh, to have an access to a house, to a car, to a good uh, public education uh, and pro-family uh, policies uh, that uh, you are implementing. Yeah. Um, I, I want to shift gears to, um, uh, to, try to, to try to build bridges between what, uh, what Spanish conservatives are trying to achieve and what Hungary has been trying to achieve. Um, and, then we'll sh and then we'll evolve towards the EU landscape. We're heading into very important elections in June. Um, but in, in the November 10th speech that you gave in the parliament, you made a very interesting historical argument where you drew a parallel between, as you've just done now, between Spain and Hungary. Um, there are two millenary nations that have sat on sort of the borderland between Christianity and Islam uh, that have been defined by their, their opposition to, to Islam and, and their, their defiance of, of neighboring empires and, and, and their Christian roots. Um, now, I think that for a Hungarian audience, I think sometimes it's hard to understand what's going on in Spain and the idea that a 530-year-old nation like Spain is beginning to unravel and that it could, it could potentially disappear in its current form. How do you begin to explain this to a Hungarian audience? And do you think that this is, that this is a larger point about the future of the nation state in Europe? That's a very interesting topic because, of course, uh, I did uh, this uh, parallelism because it, it's true, it's not an opinion that uh, both Spain and Hungary are historical nations. I don't want to put example of another nations that don't have this history, but of course, both Hungary and Spain uh, have them. It's not an opinion, it's a fact that uh, both nations uh, were created in its uh, affirmations against uh, the Islam here. You had uh, the, um, the, the, the Turkish or the Ottoman uh, invasion. We both had uh, our own uh, reconquista, uh, our own reconquest of, of the Iberian uh, Peninsula. And we had to fight for our, or for our own freedom to preserve our culture and to, and to take care of our uh, Christian roots. So what is unbelievable from nowadays of the 21st century is so many people that still don't care about uh, mass migration, about uh, new uh, cultures taking out maybe the, the Christianity to impose their own culture. And I think we have uh, a debt with our parents, with our grandparents to preserve our own nation, to preserve our identity. Because if so many generations of Hungarians and French and German and, and Spanish people uh, fight it to, to conserve, to, to preserve their, their nation. Our duty is to do the same, just uh, to have a, a nation with, which is open to, to legal, to, or to order uh, migration, but that has its own identity that preserves 
its own culture and and for us as a political movement as as a party is a priority yeah and this is where i want to shift gears to the to the to the eu um to the eu level um there is though something that i think hungarians can more easily relate to when it, about what's happening in spain which is um the debate about rule of law and i think people are uh, are starting to realize what i think hungary has been um raising the alarm about for a long time, which is the weaponization of rule of law as a political cudgel against conservative governments and policies. Um, um, because now what you're seeing now is this inaction by Brussels, this inaction by the European Commission against the unconstitutional amnesty bill that will be, that will be voted on tomorrow in, in Spain. Um, so what what does Vox expect from Brussels on this issue? Do, do, you, do you think the EU is just simply unable to call out democratic backsliding when it comes from the left? Is there any chance that Vox, through your, through, through your MEPs in Brussels, through even maybe your role in the Committee of the Regions, is there any chance that we can actually try to, to beat up Sanchez with a cudgel? We are trying to defend uh, our democracy and the rule of law in any place that that we can in Brussels, in in the um, in the courts, in in the streets. But actually, we we don't expect much from this uh, European Commission, as we can see with the Hungarian or the Polish case. In the European Union nowadays, there is a double standard in what mm -hmm. uh, refers to the to the rule of law and the protection of, of the democracy. Uh, we see how there is a witch hunt against Poland and Hungary in terms of, of um, European funds uh, in relation with uh, national politics of, of these both countries, but it looks like uh, this European Commission doesn't care about what the uh, Spanish government is doing with the rule of law. Um, the amnesty law that is going to be approved, as it looks like in, in Spain. It's um, a real mistake. It's a, a, a very uh, strong attack to the democracy and to the rule of law, because it's going to um, forget or and forgive all, uh, civil liability uh, things, administrative responsibilities, uh, real uh, crimes and offenses uh, to the Spanish uh, unity and it's going to, to give the power to people that ha have committed the, the most uh, important uh, crimes that can be committed in, in, a Western, uh, in a Western state. So we are opposing to it. Uh, we are uh, saying and putting up uh, our voice in, in Brussels, in, in Madrid, also in the regional parliaments where we have presence but uh, we don't expect much from, from this uh, European Union Commission. Yeah, yeah. and I think we're, we're jumping into, I think, what could be the final question. If there is a little bit more time, I'll, I have a follow-up. Uh, but, um, but obviously, um, you know, we're, we're heading towards the EU elections in June. Every pollster, think tank, journalist is predicting uh, an upsurge, uh, a, a groundswell, a, a growth of, of, of reformist, sovereignist, conservative, patriotic forces in the European Parliament. Um, and, and I want to ask you, you know, you've already spent, you've, you've, we've spent the day together in, in Budapest uh, with, with, with the team. Um, you're spending the whole day tomorrow as well. What is your sense of the possibility of some, of some, um, of some substantive coordination among all of these groups that will be growing in the European Parliament? What are so first question would be, what are Vox's hopes and fears in this scenario? What, are, what, what is your party expecting to achieve in this, in this um, race? And then you're speaking to a lot of leaders from not just Fidesz, but other patriotic forces beyond Hungary and beyond Spain. Um, are, is there really an alignment? Do you see hopes of actually making a substantive change in the EU's policies after June? Yes, I think that all these uh, conservative parties that um, are part of uh, the ECR, but also Fidesz uh, and, and political parties from ID have uh, many uh, common challenges. And, and I think that we can coordinate and be aligned 
before the European election, you have here uh, three things that are very important and that we all have clear, that is the common sense, what we, from our natural perspective, perspective think uh, of, of many things, also the idea of the nation and, and also the sovereignty and what is the, the, the roots of, of our civilization, the, the, the Christianity. But now there are some topics that are going to, to push us uh, up in the European elections, not only I mean Vox, but all the conservative parties, and we have seen it uh, mm -hmm. these last months and, and weeks uh, throughout uh, Holland, uh, France, uh, Germany, and many other uh, important countries in Europe. And this, um, the thing about uh, food sovereignty, for example, uh, farmers uh, are really worried about their situations. The mm. European Union are uh, imposing them more and more uh, bureaucracy. Mm. Uh, this is not sustainable for them. And we are standing for for our farmers uh, in Castilla y León and in the rest of Spain. And I think this is one of the uh, most important uh, topics in the European debate before the, the elections. But also there's a big problem that is uh, illegal migration. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a great problem in Spain. We are receiving every day boats and boats of, of, of people coming without any control to our southern border, not only Ceuta, Melilla, to the Canary Islands, uh, Andalusia. Uh, so in Spain, uh, migration is getting more and more mm. uh, a big problem. And um, until two weeks ago, the only party in Spain talking about legal, uh, the problem of uh, illegal migration was, was Vox. So I think uh, this is going to be also one of the most important uh, things uh, that uh, are going to determine the, the result of, of the elections. And also, I think that people in, in all countries, but, but of course in Spain, are starting to be bored and, and tired all of all this uh, wokeism, uh, gender ideology, um, trans uh, laws, and all this war between men and women. So I think that uh, parties like us that are fighting against the 2030 agenda and wokeism are going also to be um, supported by, by a lot of people in the European elections. And I think that um, in, in, normal, in a normal situation, as expected, we are going uh, to grow, so, so we are optimistic. Terrific. And I think, I, I wonder, five minutes. Um, so this uh, affords me the, the, um, the leeway for, for a quick follow-up. Um, um, you know, um, so what is the, um, if, if you had to, you, you've just cited a few of the issues that you think would be, would potentially federate or, or at least help these forces coalesce, right? They see eye to eye, you see eye to eye, we see eye to eye on, um, you've cited migration, um, fighting woke ideology, uh, supporting farmers. I think you could even cite devolt sovereignty, right? resetting kind of the, the European project back to collaboration, collaboration between member states and not imposition. Um, now, what is the, um, what do you think, um, what do you think that uh, an event like CPAC can achieve? You know, uh, we, we would certainly love to, to see you uh, back here in Budapest for the event, which will be heavily focused on, on making this coalition happen. Um, what do you think, uh, should, what, what do you think are the issues where we disagree? And how do you think we should go about this, these disagreements heading into the, the election? Mm, I don't know if I want to focus on the, these things that mm. we may disagree. We, I think we have uh, the 95% of mm. the ideas in common. We have the, the same idea of, of the family, of sovereignty, and uh, how to attract international investment to, mm -hmm. to our countries, the idea of, of making sure our supply chains, but, but I think that we have to focus mm -hmm. on what we have in common. What is sure is that what we have in common are the enemies, <laughs> which are the left mm -hmm. and the globalist. So if we have in common the enemies, the, the little differences that we may, that we may have uh, will not be important. The most important is to see that in every country, the, the media are uh, colonized by a huge 
percentage of, of leftist journalists that are going to attack any of our proposals, any of our ideas, and are going to try to cancel mm -hmm. ourselves. So I think that we have to leave our differences apart, <laughs> take all our uh, common challenges and put, it, put them in the middle, and then the, the result uh, will, will come. As you said at the beginning, uh, we have been uh, attacked, of course, uh, for supporting uh, some of the Hungarian proposals, most of them, uh, to, be, to be honest. But we believe that the, that the truth will prevail, that the good uh, will prevail. And I think that what we must follow, all the conservative movements, are, is the Hungarian attitude. That is uh, to resist to the witch hunt, to resist to the blackmail, and to resist to the... Uh, attacks that you are receiving from all over the world. And if we resist in these elections, but in the years to come, uh, the truth will prevail and finally the patriots uh, will win. Well, I think what a wonderful note to, to end the, the event. And thank you all for coming again to tonight's program. Can I please ask the audience to give Juan Garcia Gallardo a round of applause? And um, thank him for his, for his presence. So thank you. You'll be you'll be here for another day. So uh, so um, there will be another event tomorrow in the evening and and Wednesday and on Wednesday you're taking off to Brussels. Thank you again so much for for coming to Budapest. Thank you, Jorge, for co of course for your warm welcome for organizing such an interesting agenda for um, for um, organizing this thing with such an amazing uh, public of Hungarian people, and we hope we can meet soon again.